Again, both of these may seem reasonable, but identical or similar questions had already been asked by the jury over 12 times. <laughs> so there's a room with is it 12 people and none of them know the answer to these questions. None. Fucking hell. Today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. More on them in a bit. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another brand new episode of Brain Blaze. I, as always, am your revered host, Simon Wamsey, one of my writers. Uh, in this case, it's not Danny. It's not Kevin. It's Liam. Liam has written for me, uh, for me before on uh, Casual Criminalist. Has he written before on Brain Blaze? I don't think so. Maybe he has. I'm sorry, Liam, if I forgot. Um, there's 12 angry morons, the worst jury decisions of all time. Oh, we're going to have a laugh with this one. I always enjoy these, like where it's just like, what the f*** is going on in the world? Welcome to today's episode of The Casual Criminalist. Oh, either I've made... I don't think I've made an error. I'm pretty sure I've made an error. This is a joke. Otherwise, you'll this will never see the light of day because this somehow is supposed to be on Casual Criminalist. But I don't think it possibly could be because we'd never do an episode called 12 Angry Morons because it's a serious show. Very, very serious. Where we'll be continuing our story of the insidious Wyman Schistler. <laughs> Uh, 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 in our last bar, we saw how the serial kidnapper and assaulter of radiators was finally captured after he made the key mistake of admitting his crimes in several hundred YouTube videos. Ah, oh, shit. Uh, as sh <coughs> as Schistler was dragged into court, he was reminded of the numerous charges against him, which included kidnapping, assaulting a radiator, establishing a monopoly of YouTube channels, effortlessly, effortless. Ah, oh, god damn it, Liam. Effortlessly, effort, effortlessly, effortlessly assaulting the English language and murdering a dog. I've never murdered any dogs. I might have a YouTube monopoly, but I've never murdered any dogs. So far. Luckily for Schistler, the dog murder charge had been dropped on grounds that it's only a dog who cares. It's not like we, it was a cat or anything. <laughs> not long after Schistler got to the pulpit. I don't think they call it a pulpit in court, do they? It's called like a... God, what is it called? I don't even remember. Doesn't matter. Stand? Stand. Where he would spend the remainder of the trial, his lawyer looked at him and warned, this is going to be a difficult one. Wait, they don't do that in public? <laughs> Your lawyer's like, this is going to be really hard, mate. <laughs> You've had that conversation before privately. Schistler just scoffed and replied, as Lord Devlin said, the jury is the lamp that lights democracy. I'm going to be fine. It was only then that he actually looked at the jury and saw a psychic laying out her tarot cards, a man eating a crayon, and a man in an all infamous and a man in an all too infamous white pointed hoodie. What's going on? It was then that he looked to see Lord Justice D. Annie. Justice Danny, ah, and realized that this was going to be a tough time. Today's blaze will be calling through the craziest juries in legal history. In gathering cases for this topic, I've generally tried to avoid juries that simply got a case wrong, but instead looked to juries who have acted in a way that would have us asking not if they were dropped on their head as a baby, but instead how often they were dropped on their head as a baby. <laughs> for this first video, I've only included cases from England and Wales. Holy I was immediately like, this is going to be so American. There's going to be so many crazy American juries in this one. But no, England and Wales. Love it. I don't want to play with you anymore. But I've also included cases from my PhD research. Liam's a big brain. Uh, which is actually on this exact topic. That's code for can I have an extra serving of spam, Mr. Fact Boy? Yes, you can, Liam. You earned it. And so now, without further ado, let's begin the second introduction. And now your spam has been taken away. <coughs> oh, shit. The jury has been operating in criminal cases in England for about 900 years. It has been used in a broader range of cases in various nations for about one and a half millennia, with the earliest juries found in ancient Greece. In all that time, one principle has remained true above all else. The jury is the corner of the legal system. It is meant to be the way that your everyday person interacts with the legal system. Saying that, I don't know what lesson you've drawn from Brainblaze, but I seem to get the impression that the everyday person is ever so slightly a bit of a dumbass. The everyday person is the sort of person who has to explain to a smirking nurse that they just so happened to fall on an upright cucumber <laughs> after coming out of the shower. <laughs> it's like, how did that get up your bottom? I fell on it. You fell on the cucumber that was pointing upwards. Mm. Unfortunately, being dumb isn't an excuse to avoid jury service, and today we're going to find out what happens when the lowest in the gene pool get called to perform their civic duty. 
12 angry psychics jury statistically both in the uk and the us actually only hear about one percent of all criminal cases unfortunately that one percent includes the most serious of all cases our first case yeah it's like <laughs> when it's a small crime a judge does it and when it's a big crime we just get regular people to make the decision <laughs> i mean i get it i get why juries exist i kind of like the idea of juries i have to say i've more come around because i live in a country where there are no juries like here in prague in czech republic it's just judges they make all of the decisions and i used to find this super intense because it was like the judge makes a decision on like the pre the former prime minister of this country is currently as we're recording this in part of like a four-day trial for some like it's like some it's it's bad but it's also blown wildly out of proportion about how like serious it is at least in my opinion look obviously it was dodgy but it's like bro the guy who's like uh who this is this is like allegedly in my opinion this cannot be the most dodgy thing this guy has ever done he's a billionaire and it's like over some like million dollar uh, million euros of like eu funds or something and i'm like bro <laughs> this is not this is not the sketchiest thing this guy's ever done allegedly in my opinion a few moments later why are we talking about this oh oh yeah <laughs> <coughs> oh yeah because like um i used to find it really intense the judges made all of the decisions I kind of come around to it like kind of think that's fine our first case is one of the our first case is the one of the murder the, our first case our first case it our first case is one of these the murder trial of stephen andrew young young was alleged to have broken into the house of harry and nicola fuller in february 1993. it was further alleged that after breaking in he tied them up taunted them burglarized the house and executed both of them the crime had generated a large amount of news and as such when the trial began in 1994 the judge ordered that the jury be sequestered sequestering is a rather strange legal mechanism i feel like i know about this because of john grisham novels like the jury has to live in a hotel and they can't look at the news and stuff right they can't be interfered with and biased by the outside world effectively the jurors of the trial are put under arrest and held at a secure location for the duration of the trial the reason for sequestering can be any number of reasons but generally a jury is sequestered so that news coverage cannot affect their verdict or so that they cannot do their own research on a case which could constitute a crime holy <laughs> it's dangerous to be a juror uh generally as in the young case a jury is sequestered in a decent hotel in this case it happened to be the old ship hotel in brighton now at this point you might be thinking that this is all pretty standard but unfortunately it was that sequestering that enabled what was about to happen however i'm not going to spoil that quite yet wait what could possibly be happening when they're all sequestered I don't know evidence was introduced by the defense that young wasn't even in the country at the time of the murders the prosecution countered this with an eyewitness report which was just close enough to young's description to stop the case from being thrown out <sighs> eyewitness of someone someone's sketchy description this is the 90s there must have been records of him going in and out was uk part of the eu then when did uk join eu no it was or like the economic community um there's going to be records of this dude coming in and out and there's gonna be something, right? People like credit cards. Catch me outside, how about that? Catch you outside? When the jury retired, many of the lawyers began their journey home, not expecting a verdict anytime soon. Only 14 minutes later, the jury sent the news that they had their verdict. Now, it has long been the understanding of lawyers that a short deliberation time means that the jury will find guilty, and that is exactly what happened here. Young was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum term of 50 years, and the jury was dismissed. Just like that. There's got to be more than that random eyewitness report saying he was in the country. There's got to be a ton more evidence, surely. All was good in the world. A double murder had been sent down and the jury had conducted its duty. Right? Well, not exactly. Two weeks after the trial, a solicitor for one of the jurors reached out to the judge and spun an interesting story. You see, when a jury is sequestered, they're given a few days to gather any belongings that they wish to take with them to the hotel. These days, we have a list of items, which are prohibited, with almost all of these being electronic items. Oh my god, this has got to be so boring. You're just stuck in a hotel. You can't watch the news. You don't have your phone. You don't have your laptop. I would go absolutely batty. However, this case was about to add a whole new category to the prohibition list, and that's mystic goods. You see, one of the jurors had brought along a Ouija board. <laughs> and while in the hotel it conducted a seance at this seance four other jurors were present and they asked the victim of the murder of the murder who murdered them what's your name what the what the
Apparently, the spirits were not on Young's side that day. It was later also reported by this juror that the seance had not only been introduced into the deliberation room, but was the decisive piece of evidence. Are you f kidding me? There's no what? There's no, hang on. Do the jury get to conduct their jury stuff? Their, their um, what's the word for that? Jurying. I don't know. Uh, there's no officer of the court in there or whatever, just making sure that they're not doing like Ouija's and shit. I mean, obviously they're not interfering with the decision, but they're like that is against the rules. <laughs> you shouldn't be doing that. No. If you ask me, the jurors just wanted to go home after five weeks and would have done anything to get out of there. Yeah, that's another problem. I'm just gonna be like. Uh, like, nine of the people, or however many you need, are like, he's guilty, and I'll be like, I definitely think he's not guilty. I definitely think he's innocent. Yeah, no, he's guilty. Can we go home? <laughs> Is a problem? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Well, I'm never going to get called for jury duty, because there's no juries here. Ah, oh, love that. That's a bonus. Now, you may be thinking that's bad enough, but no, it gets worse. Many people have misreported this case. Yes, the verdict was overturned and a retrial ordered, but people report that this is because the Court of Appeal decided that the jury forsook their oath. This is not true. The Court of Appeal do discuss the forsaking of an oath, but not concerning whether a mistrial was required. The reason the verdict was overturned is far, far more ridiculous. It is a criminal offense to reveal what happens in a jury room in England and Wales. You cannot explain the reasoning of a jury, and you cannot ask them to explain playing surely there's got to be an exception when there's like some sort of gross misconduct surely i don't know it's a mystery i suppose you could just tip someone off anonymously and then it's a crime and they'll know that it was one of the jurors but they won't know who which is maybe why they did it through a solicitor. This protects the jury from any scrutiny at all and makes research on this topic extremely difficult. The reason the verdict was overturned by the original trial judge was not that the jury used a Ouija board, it was the fact that secrecy was broken. In effect, the Ouija board was legally fine. <laughs> <laughs> what? But the fact that they found out they used one was not. So next time you're in the dock, maybe get a tarot reading first. Hell. Guys. I'm interrupting this video. It's time to talk about something new. It's not something new. It's Squarespace. They have uh, they have been our oldest and most loyal subscriber. And if you like this show, and look, here you are, halfway through it, because this is a mid-roll ad, just checking. Uh, look, if you like this show, and you've not built a website yet, and you need a website, do it with Squarespace, because not only is Squarespace the absolute best place to do it, but it also supports the show, which is nice. That makes me make more videos and all of that stuff it's how the bread is buttered and look if you bread is buttered means like if you say that's how the bread's buttered that means how you make money right have i got that phrase have i got that phrase right <laughs> and look if you want to butter your bread you can do a store with squarespace which is fantastic so like i don't know let's say you've got a dream of selling I'm always super uncreative, and I always think I'll come up with something on the fly, but I never do, so I always just say widgets. <laughs> if you just want to sell widgets, uh, you could start a score store with Squarespace, and it's super easy. Or, uh, you know, a blog, or just a personal website, or whatever. Just go over to squarespace.com. You go over, and you're like, okay, there's a bunch of templates, and you should they even have this quiz that asks you what your website's about to, like, narrow down the templates you could choose from, because there are a lot of templates, so you're bound to find something you like. And then you pick one, and you're like, that's for me, then you customize it, it's ridiculously easy, and then you add all these extra features that they want me to tell you about. Member areas, email campaigns, you can collect donations, analytics, blogging tools, connect social media accounts. Email campaigns. I was using... I don't have to say I don't send an email newsletter, even though I have like a thing saying sign up for my email newsletter on my website just because I'm really lazy. But I was paying unnamed company. It was hundreds of dollars a month because, I don't know, I had like lots of people put in their emails and I never did anything with them. Uh, I'm sorry for those people who expect to get a newsletter from me. I just, I'm sorry. But <laughs> irrelevant. I was paying hundreds of dollars a month for this service which I was supposed to use to email people. And eventually I was like, no, too much. And then I remembered from my Squarespace ad reads that I could do it on Squarespace. And I'm like, okay, thank God. <laughs> because Squarespace is not hundreds of dollars a month. It's super affordable. Um, did I mention it's easy to set up? I mentioned the templates. We did that. I just go off the talking points because I've been doing this for years. And I just tell you what I like about Squarespace, which I don't know, I feel like that's got a better vibe. You can make whatever website you want. We talked about the extra features. Look, this is it. If you're making a website, just do it with Squarespace. Stop being crazy. It's like, I'm going to learn HTML. No, don't do that. That's a waste of time. That would be like learning French and then Google release like a magical thing that goes in your ear like in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and it's like, oh my god, look, I can understand the French people. That would be like learning French now because 
Are you following my analogy of why you should buy Squarespace? Look, go to squarespace.com forward slash blaze and you'll get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain using the code blaze. Again, squarespace.com slash blaze, 50% off your first purchase of a website or domain using the code blaze. Language can be slightly modified to match tone. I didn't do that. I just read it like you told me to. <laughs> I guess I'm matching the tone now. The tone is silliness. Thanks, Squarespace. And now back to today's video. 12 angry morons. If you thought that last case was bad, the next one a journalist asking whether we need IQ tests for juries. Yeah, maybe. It's often joked that most hated people in society are lawyers and bankers. However, I say this isn't true. There is one group of people that we hate more than any other. Politicians. <laughs> so, what happens when a politician is put in front of a jury? Well, to answer that question, we need look no further than the 2003 case of Vicky Price, wife of the then British Secretary of State of Energy and Climate Change, Chris Hune. The case stems from an event on the 12th of March 2003 when Hune's car was caught by a speed camera. At the time, it was reported that Price had been driving and so she got the points in her license. However, this was a lie. What? Why is this going in front of a jury? It's a speeding ticket. <laughs> The stupidity began in June 2010 when Hune was caught having an affair with his PR advisor. A month later, Price met with several high ranking Liberal Democrat MPs and told them all about what had happened. Only a year after that, she reportedly called Hune up four times each time, allegedly recording the call and trying to get Hune to admit to what had happened. Don't worry, though, it's not like recording your admission to a crime can ever bite you in the ass until it did when the Sunday Times and Mail on Sunday both ran full front page stories with the transcripts of the recordings. Wait, I don't understand what's going on. So she's trying to get him to admit that he took the points for her? I mean, I know it's a crime, but does anyone give a shit? <laughs> How is this a how is this a thing? Why are you trying to get into admit to this? People are gonna be like, yeah, all right. <laughs> what? This ultimately led to Hune and Price facing prosecution for preventing the course of justice in Southwark Crown Court later that year. Perverting the course of justice for taking someone's points. I just isn't this a bit absurd? When they were prosecuted separately by Keir Starmer. Wait, as in the guy who wants to be Prime Minister but probably won't be? Uh, would later become the head of the Labour Party. Okay. What is this story? Again, at this point, you might be saying, Liam, come on now, that's all pretty standard. Do a crime and receive a fair trial, right? Well, no. You see, the trial happens. The prosecution won, and Price was sentenced to eight months in jail, but she only ended up serving two. Wait, what? I'm so confused. Liam, did you word this right, or did I just get... Do I just have a small brain? Did she go to prison for eight? To, she get a prison. So she, she she went to prison for two months because she took someone else's points and lied about it and tried to what? What's going on? While in jail, she would appeal the fact that she had to pay the prosecution's costs, which had reached a million pounds. The Court of Appeal rejected her claim that the costs were unreasonable. However, they did order a retrial, though, because they doubted the jurors had a basic grasp on reality. Now, what does it take to get a judge to officially say on the record that you had no grasp of reality? The answer can be found in the questions the jurors asked throughout the trial. Asking a question is a process through which jurors can pass a note to the bailiff, who then passes this note to the judge. Honestly, mate, I have to ask questions about this because not really sure what happened. Um, am I dumb? Yes. Generally, these questions are about more technical legal matters, or just when is lunch. In this case, however, the questions would be slightly different. I've included a short list of them to illustrate this point. Unfortunately, the questions are not verbatim, as jury communications are not officially recorded in England and Wales. Firstly, my personal favourite is, if we don't think that the evidence shows that Price committed the crime, but we don't like her, can we still find her guilty? No. <laughs> You can't. Secondly, for all you Bible bashers out there, when deciding on the principles to follow in judgment, can we look to the Bible for guidance? Not to be outdone, though, the jurors also asked, would a religious conviction be a valid defense for Price breaking the law? What the f*** are you doing, jury? Who are you? Also included in their questions were, can we find the defendant guilty because she didn't prove she was innocent? <laughs> no, you have you not heard of innocent or proven guilty? Jesus! And what does reasonable doubt mean? This is the most basic that is definitely explained to you. Again, both of these may seem reasonable, but identical or similar questions that have already been asked by the jury over 12 times. So there's a room with this in 12 people and none of them know the answer to these questions. None! Fucking hell. And the final question which sealed the entire appeal, can the jury come to a conclusion based on evidence that was not presented by either the defense or the prosecution? So you're basically admitting that you're reading the papers. 
So, Simon, next time you're in court for pressuring Danny into pretending he was the person to lock us down here, how would you feel when you see jurors passing notes to the judge? The most surprising thing about all of this is it was just about her taking points for her husband. <laughs> Which I've never done or had done for me. But I definitely wouldn't think that it was such a big problem, to be honest. And <laughs> the next thing you know, you'd be in prison. <laughs> Oh my god, 12 angry racists. So far, it feels like we're ticking off a list of the people who read the Daily Mail. So now let's come to a group we all thought of, allegedly, and that's racists. I also want to clarify at this point that just because I have another group which I have called morons, it doesn't mean that this group is not also classed as morons. No one thought that, did they? I also wanted to give you extra value here, so I've given you two cases for the price of one. The two cases are the case of Gregory and the case of Sanders, both being human rights cases, which is generally already a sign that you're dealing with sh people. In Gregory, the defendant, who was black, had been charged with a robbery. This is a fairly serious offense, and the defendant was facing a maximum of 12 years in jail. He's never going to get that for robbery. In Near the end of the trial, a juror passed the, no, a ju the judge a note, a practice that until today's video wouldn't have made anyone sweat. The judge later revealed that the note read, Can we find the defendant guilty because he looks a bit dark? Ah! They don't mean, surely they mean like he looks dark as in, you know, rather than being black. <laughs> So now I ask you, Lord Justice Whistler, what would you order be done if you were that judge? I'd be like, what do you mean exactly by dark? Do you mean as in a uh, physical characteristic or just a look of the person? Do they look scary? And either way, one, you're definitely getting, you know, dismissed or whatever. And two, you might. You might. You, sh you shouldn't be judging it because he looks a bit sinister. For context, the note was passed to the judge at the deliberation stage of the trial, meaning that the jury had heard all of the evidence and the jury in question had already had the chance to speak to the other jurors in the secrecy of the deliberation room. I would hope that you decided on some combination of dismissing the case and holding that juror in contempt of court. Mm, no. Can I? I thought we just said it was all secret. So you can dismiss them. And I'm not trying to defend what that juror was doing, but they should have an expectation of privacy and privilege to ask the judge questions, because otherwise they'd be afraid to do it at risk of prosecution, right? It'd be weird if they could get in trouble for that, even though they should. <laughs> you betray the law! That is a slightly different conclusion to what our judge reached, though he decided that in the, the interest of a fair trial would only be satisfied if he answered the note. That's right, he just straight up answered the question and said, no, you're not allowed to be racist. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you can't just tell someone not to be racist. Like, don't be racist anymore. They're still racist. You didn't change anything. That's some pretty dark stuff. As anybody who has used Twitter knows, all you need to do to stop racists is to tell them don't, is to tell them, don't do that, bro. <laughs> Racism ended. Applause to the judge. Now, before I tell you how this ended up, I want to tell you about Sanders. Sanders followed a virtually identical set of facts to Gregory, except that the defendant was Asian and the note passed to the judge was slightly different. This note wasn't even a question. It was a copy of a racist joke that a juror had made about the defendant. What? Just, what? Why? Like our above burgeoning social warrior, this judge decided that all he had to do was tell the jury not to consider the defendant's race. And if that wasn't bad enough, both the Court of Appeal and House of Lords, the only appellate courts at the time, felt that there were no possible appealable issues in either case. Isn't the House of Lords still as high as it goes? Because there used to be the, uh, the EU thing, but I guess there's not anymore? It's been a long time since I studied this can't believe I can't remember that. This resulted in both cases being taken to the European Court of Human Rights. Yes, but that is not anymore. Oh, it could be. Did we leave that system? I don't know. Thankfully, for all who are sane, the ECHR decided that both juries were probably tainted and suggested that a retrial was warranted in both cases. Unfortunately, the ECHR's opinions aren't legally binding, so the court in Gregory ignored the ruling while the court in Sanders applied the ruling. So, if you were from a minority, how would you feel the next time you're in the dock? Honorable mention, well, not good, to be honest, not good. Honorable mention. Now, did I say, and, and this is another thing why it's like maybe a judge would be better because they're like going to put their, you know, they're, they're not they're not going to be like, what's reasonable doubt? <laughs> Can I consider if he's, you know, a minority? <laughs> he looks a bit dark. <laughs> Now, I did say at the start of this video that I wouldn't mention any case solely for the fact of the verdict. Having said that, it's time to talk about O.J. Simpson. 
Simpson. The jury in the O.J. Simpson trial was held on sequester for eight and a half months. This was so long that the jury at one point went on strike and came to court full in full black funeral attire. Then at the end of the case, which had seen, can you imagine eight months of your life? If someone was like, you've got to go do jury duty for eight months of your life, Simon, I'd be like, I'm not going to come back to, I'm not going to come back to a business. I'm going to come back to unemployment. What are you doing? Then at the end of the case, which had seen airtight DNA evidence, a motive, and a full confession, the jury still found O.J. Simpson guilty of the murder of his ex-wife and her friend. Wait, no, they didn't. Wait, hold on, he was definitely not guilty. Am I insane? I think that's just a typo. Because Liam definitely wrote in a full confession, the jury still found O.J. Simpson guilty. No, there was, he was not guilty. If that wasn't enough, the jury considered all eight and a half months of evidence in only four f- hours. Luckily, though, the US doesn't have the same rules prohibiting asking jurors their reason for a verdict, and several would later explain their verdict in interviews. In these interviews, the jurors would explain how the decision had been a political one and that the evidence which was presented didn't weigh much on their decisions. Oh my god, good lord, what? Like all good teasers, though, I'm not going to say any more. If you want to hear more about the mayhem of the O.J. Simpson case, then be sure to catch our upcoming Casual Criminal episode on the topic. I think I that one to record actually I haven't done that yet which was included in the same email as this episode script there we go so that concludes some of the craziest cases involving juries in history and there are plenty more where they came from who knows i may even get to list some of those in a future video for now though i just want to ask you one question what's your verdict on juries would you feel safe being tried by tried by one i'd feel a lot more certain if it was a judge i feel like it's less roll of the dice isn't it <laughs> that's right i know you love introductions so much that i stuck one in at the end i want to thank simon for both letting me write my first brain blaze and for letting me write it on a topic i find so fascinating please if you have any feedback leave a comment or jump over to reddit where i will have a live chat at the time this video goes out all right you just created some work for me or i've got to inform you about when this bloody video is out <laughs> okay okay fine fine i'll do it i'm not busy I'm not, I'm not going, I've got loads of free time. That's where this video ends, because I'm busy and don't have loads of free time. I've never murdered any dogs. I might have a YouTube monopoly, <laughs> but I've never murdered any dogs. So far.